good afternoon and welcome to the Rockus Blum Computer Consulting Monthly Webinar Series. And my name is Kelly Bergman and it's my pleasure to introduce you to Ken Knight, Senior Solutions Consultant for VBCC. Ken has been working in the SAGE ecosphere, I feel like that's a good word for it, for over 25 <laughs> years. And Alerts and Workflow tends to be one of his more favorite products, so we asked him kindly to present this webinar today. It is truly the assistant you always wanted for the cost of a cup of coffee a day. No joke. It is not an expensive piece of software. Now, before I ramble on forever, I'm going to hand the floor right over to Ken. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining. So Sage Alerts and Workflow, let's talk a little bit about what it is. Um, I'm not going to be doing a PowerPoint presentation. I'm just going to chat here for a few minutes, and then I'm going to go right into the software. So Sage Alerts and Workflow is a software that uses what are known as events to automatically send emails, accept responses to those emails, generate reports, create files, send texts, launch programs, et cetera. It does this based either on a set schedule or based on a schedule with triggers. And what a trigger is, that's where you define specific criteria that you want to monitor in your system in Sage 100 or really any database. You want to monitor for that criteria on a regular basis, something like the customers over their credit limit or our inventory is below a reorder point. Alerts and workflow will then only take action if those criteria are met. Then based on the schedule, it will go ahead and generate and send out an email saying, hey, this item is below its reorder point or something along those lines. We'll get into more details in a second. Now, this may look complicated at first, but I don't want you to think that this is terribly complex because one of the things that I will show you is that you can download dozens of pre-configured events and what are called event packs that you can use with very, very little effort. So with that being said, so that I do not distract myself, I am going to stop my video and I am going to go ahead and get logged into. Now, Kelly, everyone is seeing my screen, correct? They sure are, sir. Excellent. So Sage Alerts and Workflow is a browser-based software product. So I'm going to go ahead and get logged into it. And you'll notice on the left-hand side that we have a menu structure. And what I wanna do is kind of start from the bottom up and discuss each of these a little bit. So under admin, this is where you can set up things such as user accounts, who's able to access Sage Alerts and Workflow and configure the actual alerts within the system. And that can be done utilizing very similar to Sage 100, where you set up users and you assign security roles. Our services are where we set up the email account that we're going to use to send out these alerts. Our webcast locations. If you're utilizing SQL Server reporting services, what locations exist for that? And if you're going to be sending out texts, any SMS accounts. You can establish a holiday schedule within the system so that an alert is not sent out on a holiday when you guys are not doing business. And then we have some other administrative things as far as application settings and linked servers. Not going to get into a lot of detail on that. That's kind of on the techie side. Under monitor, Monitor is literally just that. Monitor is where you have the ability to take a look at our application events that have been triggered. Have they gone through successfully? So as an example here, this would show me any of the pending application events, those that have been checked in a given period of time, like this week, this month, or a given date range, those that were triggered, and you'll notice that I was testing these not too long ago. And any of those that had any errors so that we could troubleshoot, hey, why didn't this thing work? And you'll notice that we can monitor the events themselves, 
our email delivery system, did it work? Our SMS delivery, file delivery, webcast delivery, report generation, email response system, et cetera. So the monitor is literally just that, a monitor. Then we get into the event designer, which really is the heart and soul of this system. So let's take a look real quick. Event packs, as I had mentioned, there are available to you for free. They come with the software. It's a separate download, but you get them with the software. Um, event packs, which are packs of specific events. This is where you would manage those. If I had a new one to install, this is where I could browse to the appropriate file and go ahead and upload it. What those look like is under my application events, you'll notice that we have Sage 100 AP events. All of these I did not write. Invoices due in three days, invoices due in seven days, invoices due today. I did not write these. These came in an event pack for Sage 100 AP events. Similarly, we have Sage 100 AR, Bill of Material, Common Information, Purchase Orders, Sales Orders, an Operations Management event pack, which has many, many different events built into it. Some for Sage CRM. So there are many different events that are available that are pre-configured, do not require you to start from scratch. It doesn't require you to know everything and start with a blank slate. You can actually start with some pre-configured events. And I'm going to come back to that in a moment. Job streams, what a job stream is, is this gives you the ability to daisy chain events. So I can add a job stream that is going to say fire event number one, and then once that is completed, fire event number two. So if you envision the concept of we have an event that perhaps generates a file, then once that file has been generated, fire another event, which fires a VB script, that then does something with that file. That's the whole concept behind a job stream. Subscribers are where you define who's going to be receiving these events. Out of the box, the system kind of puts together these groups, customer service, executive team, finance, help desk, et cetera. You can create your own groups if you choose to do so. So we have the ability to, if I click on users here, I can create a new group, a new folder. Executive team, you'll see that I have myself set up in here as a recipient. And this is some of the information that you would fill out. Obviously just contact information, a user lookup key. If I'm receiving an email, do I have a primary and secondary email? Copy information, webcast information, SMS if I'm going to receive something via text. And then it will show you what events is any given user subscribed to. Because part of setting up an event is telling the system, who do you want to receive this? Okay, so let's get into our application events, which as I said, this really is the heart of Sage Alerts and Workflow. So I'm going to go into the Sage 100 AR, and I'm going to take a look at this event, which takes a look at our customers and says that their AR balance plus open orders is greater than their credit limit. And clicking on this button is going to take me into the edit screen. And forgive me, this works much better as an end user if you're on a bigger screen. But Kelly and I tested that before this event and uh, found that it didn't show so well. So I've got this on a screen that's going to show well, but 
little challenging to navigate because of the amount of real estate that I've limited to. So we start with our event details. And our event details, here's our event, customer balance plus open orders is going to be greater than the credit limit. We have our event description. We can set event priorities. This box determines whether or not any given event is active. So you can create multiple different events and only have a handful of them active. If we copy to this event, and this event had a report that it generated, do we want to include the report on the copy? Repeat notification of triggered items. This is a very unique feature of Sage Alerts and Workflow in that the software will track any record that has been triggered. So you have the option of continuing to send out an alert saying, hey, this customer's balance plus open orders is greater for their credit limit. Or if I deselect this, that information is only going to get sent out once. So once that record has triggered the event, then it, it will be tracked by Sage Alerts and Workflow. And with this box deselected, it would not, that information would not be included on the next time that event runs. I'm going to go ahead and leave this at repeat. Do we want to keep only the last checked record in the monitor? Or do we want to keep all of them? You can have multiple different triggers. We'll talk about that in a second. And you have some option to get all of the results or literally just the first one that meets it. Okay, so we have some event details that get set up. Then you have the schedule. When do we want this to run? And the system comes with a whole bunch of schedules available to you. Do we want this to go every minute, every five minutes, 15, every Friday at five, daily at five, every hour? Um, sorry about that. When an email arrives, do we not want to have a schedule on this, which means we're going to manually fire it? And then you have the ability to both edit the schedule as well as create a new schedule. If I edit this schedule, you'll see that this literally is firing daily at five. You can control ranges, which days of the week do we want this to go on? And this is only doing weekdays. And you can see the history related to this particular schedule. You can also create event dependencies. Event dependencies are very similar to job streams, but what the dependency, the difference between the two is a job stream is gonna wait for event A to complete fully before it fires event B. Whereas this one is just going to say, okay, fire event A, fire event B, fire event C. But it's not necessarily going to wait for the previous event to complete fully before it fires the next one. But it's very similar in function of the job streams, just a minor difference there. Triggers. So let's talk a little bit about triggers. If you are doing something like generating a report on a schedule, which I'm going to show you here as, as part of the demo, you wouldn't necessarily have a trigger. You just want the system to go ahead and generate our open sales report every morning at 9 a.m. and email it to a bunch of people. But for something like this, where we're concerned about customers, where their open AR balance plus open orders is greater than their credit limit, then we're going to want to use a trigger. Now this particular trigger is handled via a query. Most of the triggers in Alerts and Workflow are going to be handled via queries. Now again, you don't have to be a SQL query expert to do this it's quite possible in the query designer to simply say, okay, 
what are the columns that I actually want to include in this particular query? And we'll give it a second here to generate the available tables. Okay, so these are all of your Sage 100 tables. And then down below, these are the selected columns that we have included in this particular query. So we're pulling in our AR customer division, our customer name, current balance, credit limit, salesperson name, salesperson email, on and on and on. The links tab is where you can actually link the tables together. And for anyone listening who's done anything with crystal reports, you'll be very familiar with the concept of linking tables. But basically, this is where we're saying, okay, let's take AR customer and AR customer contact and link via left outer, outer join to customer contact to customer. Same sort of thing here between AR customer and salesperson left out or join via salesperson division and salesperson uh, number. We can apply filters. This is where we're doing our greater than calculation. You can have sub filters. And you can actually, if you are familiar with SQL, you can actually manually edit this and simply go ahead and do your SQL query here. And I'll give you a little piece of advice that I used to use years ago, which was before I got comfortable with SQL queries, I was very comfortable with crystal reports. And I would go ahead and create a crystal report that gave me all of the data that I wanted to have in an alert. And then in Crystal, and I could show this to anyone who would care, you have the ability to preview what the SQL query looks like. And I would literally copy and paste that into my alert, and I would be good to go. And then you have the ability to preview, okay, what are all of the records that are going to meet the criteria of this query? And you'll notice that we have three, American Concrete Service, Greater Alarm Company, and Breslin Parts Supply. You can have multiple triggers for any given event. So you could have multiple criteria that you want to monitor, Sage 100 for, or whatever database we're monitoring. And if either of them are met, then it's going to go ahead and send the alert. Our deliverables then are, what is this alert supposed to do? In this case, we're telling it that we want to send an email. And this is where we're putting together what that email is. And again, this is the sort of thing where you can use this wizard. Okay, we're gonna send this from um, the Outlook email that we've established in alerts. You'll notice that we have our preview message here, and I literally can go ahead and insert various fields into this view. Or if you wanna send via plain text, you can do that. Or if you're really good with HTML coding, if you're very much a tech geek, then you would have the ability to come in here and simply say, okay, I'm just gonna plug this in via HTML. But this gives you an idea of what this message is going to be. The following accounts have a total balance, including open orders, place them over the credit limit, and it may affect future sales orders. And I'll throw in the customer ID, name, primary contact, phone, current balance, open order total, et cetera. Now, what kind of deliverables does the system offer? Again, we have the ability to send out charts, reports, files. We can deliver these via email, via SMS text, or via a webcast. 
And our actions is we can create a file. We can run a basic script. We can run a program. We can submit SQL. We can even trigger a web API. So you can get really, really complex with this and do tons of different things. Or as you get out of the box, for the most part, it's send an email alert. Then at the bottom, this is where we talk about, okay, who are our subscribers? Okay. A standard subscriber is literally going to be someone from the subscribers list. So because I'm going to demo this for you, I have this being sent just to me. But we can get fancier with this as well. And under advanced subscribers, we could pull, say, the sales rep name. And we can pull the email address for the sales rep off of the customer and then send an email out to the appropriate sales rep saying, hey, Mr. Salesman, this customer of yours is their open AR balance plus open orders is greater than the credit limit. This could be a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cancel out of here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this event now. So what's happening behind the scenes is the system is generating the alert. It's running through the query and then it's going to generate and send out the email. So if I go over to our monitor and we take a look at our application events, okay, we'll see that this was just checked at 1.22 my time. I'm on Eastern time. Okay, that it was triggered at 1.22. If we hop over to our email delivery, there's nothing pending, and these have been sent. And since I have my Outlook open on another screen, there you go. So here is one of the emails that was sent out to me. Following accounts of a total balance, place them over the credit limit, may affect future orders with all of the data points that we had plugged into the email. Now, it would be possible, the way that this is set up right now, is it's just sending one, okay, one per customer that meets these criteria. But it would be possible to group them very easily. And let's go back to the example of instead of my sending this to myself, I can figure this to send it to the salespeople. We could have one email generated per salesperson that lists all of their customers that meet this criteria. And it would simply list them out here in the email. So start thinking a little bit about what are the criteria that you might want to monitor in your system. As Kelly said, this is one of the cheapest employees you could have. If you have people now that are constantly keeping an eye on inventory items that went negative or items that are falling below their reorder point or invoices that are past due, this system can monitor for all of those things and more and automatically send emails out to the appropriate people so that they can take action. Okay, so let's take a look at yet another one. And I'm going to come back to my application events. This time, let's go into Sage AP. And you'll notice here that in the events, I backed into the queries, but these are the, the basic building blocks of any given event, is that you're going to have a query, potentially, if, you're, if you have criteria that you're monitoring in the system. If there are charts, if there are reports, and I have a report in here, which is vendor listing. That is a crystal report. And I have that tied to an event, which is my vendor listing report. So let's 
let me scrunch this up a bit to get some real estate. So again, our event is a vendor listing report. I definitely want to include that report if I happen to copy this event. No need to repeat notification for triggered items because in this particular instance, I don't have any triggers. I'm just telling the system that every Monday at 9 a.m., go ahead and generate this report, which is my deliverable to generate the report. And I want it as a PDF. And then I want to go ahead and I want to email it. With the message, please find the vendor listing report attached. And again, I'm having that sent to me. So again, in this instance where I'm just generating and sending a report, I'm not going to worry about any criteria. I simply want the report generated and sent. So let's cancel out of that and let's go ahead and run this. Again, if you're curious, you can go into the monitor. Okay, that has successfully been checked. It has been triggered. Email delivery, we are still waiting for the email delivery to occur. It's still on the pending tab. And this can take a minute or two, especially since I'm running everything and the kitchen sink on my laptop. So we'll just let that go ahead and I will come back to that once I get that delivered to me. One of the other things that we can do, and I think it may have just come through. And we'll give it a second. One of the other things that you have the ability to do is to do webcasting. Oh, there it is. So here is please find the vendor listing report attached. And here is the custom crystal report that I have created, the alerts and workflow vendor listing report which is literally just that. Granted, it's a simplistic report, but it illustrates the ability of the system to generate and send reports. It can do both crystal reports and SSRS or SQL Server Reporting Services reports. Okay, webcasting. A lot of people are like, what is the point of doing webcasting? Well, the idea behind webcasting is that you are going to go ahead and you're going to generate an HTML page. So I'm going to go ahead and let's take a look at this clients, no activities in 90 days. And again, I will scrunch this up. Okay. I don't have a schedule on this. I could easily add a schedule. My trigger is going to be this query. And again, if we take a look at that, down below are all of the columns. We have our customer number, name, current balance, credit limit, date of last activity, et cetera. Our table links, and really all we're joining is AR customer and AR salesperson. Our filter is that our date of last activity is greater than, and we plugged in a number of 90. No sub filters. Here is our SQL view, our SQL query view. And I don't know why that did not return anything because I know that this alert works. Okay, so we have that. What is our deliverable? 
our deliverable is going to be a webcast. And what it's going to do is create an HTML page that's going to list the customer name, the date of last activity, the current balance, and the sales rep name. And again, I have that set to deliver to me. So let's go ahead and run that now. And we can come up to our application event. And it will go ahead and it will overwrite. But here is the file that I created yesterday utilizing that alert just to save the time of waiting for that to generate. And what this file looks like, oh, there we go, 717.131. So it just generated it. What this file looks like is this. And you'll notice that is an HTML page, so essentially a web page. And you might wonder, well, what can I do with a web page? Well, many different things. If you have a company intranet and you have someone who's fairly technically capable, this could obviously be published into the intranet. But one of the things that we do utilize is, should be, checked and gone. One of the things that we utilize internally is we utilize Sage CRM. And if you're using Sage CRM or at all familiar with Sage CRM, one of the things that you have are interactive dashboards. And you can create your own custom gadgets for dashboards. And I created a dashboard within our CRM, which is our alerts and workflow demo, that incorporates that HTML file into our Sage CRM. So if you're utilizing CRM, you could develop multiple different HTML pages that refresh on a schedule that would then display in an interactive dashboard in CRM. It's actually a pretty cool capability. Okay, and I don't know why that's still showing as pending because it did, there we go. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about a little bit was the email response system. I don't have any demos set up to show this to you. But this is really where the workflow aspect of the system comes into play. This gives you the ability to monitor an email box. So perhaps you generate and send out an email. If someone replies, you can monitor that box and then do things with the reply. So for example, you'll notice some of these are send a confirmation to people who emailed us at our support mailbox. Automatically send information to users who request more information via email. Forward messages that are sent to our support to several different people. So this gives you that ability to monitor emails and when one comes in, react to it. You can even have this fire off a script. So maybe someone, you send out an email and you request an answer, depending on how they answer, we could fire off a script and update information in Sage 100. It's actually very, very cool software. And as Kelly and I have been saying, it's one of the cheapest employees that you're ever gonna have. And they don't take coffee breaks too. 
that really is about all that I needed to cover for today. As always, you can always reach back out to the VBCC team, Ken or myself, or any of your trusted consultants to get some more information. I would also like to quickly thank Ken for taking the time to do this presentation today. We truly appreciate your time, Ken. And of course, to all our attendees, we know your time is valuable. So we appreciate you spending a little bit of it with us.